Hey guys, welcome to another server miner plugin tutorial and today it's on Authenticate Me. So as you can see, we have been kicked from the server already and this is because we only have a certain amount of time to actually log in. So if we go ahead and rejoin, because this is our first time joining with the new plugin, we will need to register and we will need a password and then confirm the password. So you can choose how many letters or how many numbers it could be. So we're just going to go for a simple one, pass one, two, three, and that will mean we will successfully register and log in and then we are welcomed onto the server. So let's go ahead and do forward slash auth me and then help. This will show us all of the commands. There is a lot, but most of them are pretty straightforward. So if we go ahead and do forward slash auth me register and then auth me help register, this will show us the register command so you can re register other players and then if you type unregister, you can obviously unregister players so they can re-register with a different password. However, they can easily change their password. If we do forward slash auth me help and then password, uh, you can see that you can change your own password. You can change another players. Um, so it's very straightforward. You can do forward slash auth me CP for short, uh, the player, so myself, and then the password. So the minimum is five characters. The max is 30, but you can change this in the config. So let's just do pass one, for example, and that will get that sorted. Next, we are going to go to the help and go for the email. So this is pretty useful. Um, if you do forget your password, you can get an email and it will help you reset it. So you can do auth me set mail. Make sure you put the user ID, so LTGM, and then your actual email address. Um, this isn't mine. This is just a fake one I made up. So uh, don't go sending me anything. A pretty useful tool, uh, you can do forward slash auth me get IP and the player. This is a very quick way to grab a player's IP so you can IP ban them if they're doing something they shouldn't. And then if we do forward slash auth me spawn, this is going to teleport us to the spawn of the world and we can set two different spawns. So the normal spawn when people type forward slash spawn and the first join spawn. So this could be in a special room or place where it gives them help and this commands, etc., and rules. So if we do forward slash auth me help and then purge, what we can do is delete data that is older than 30 days. So sometimes players will quit a server and obviously you don't want excess data. So you can go ahead and delete old data that's not relevant anymore. Let's go ahead and do forward slash auth me and recent and that will tell us the recent players when they logged on and their IP address as well. So I'm going to make sure to block that out. So here we are in the SM Picnic control panel and we are in the plugins folder. Let's go ahead and go into the auth me folder and in here we can see there are a lot of files, there's so many. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start at the bottom and this is the welcome text. This will occur when you obviously join. So there's not much to it. It just says welcome player to whatever your server name is and the server uses auth me reloaded protection and you can obviously change that to whatever you want. If we go up to spawn.yml, the, these are the two spawns that we set in game. So the actual spawn and then the first spawn and the world it occurs in. Next, we're gonna go to email.html this is pretty cool. So this is the email players will receive if they forget their password. And as you can see, they will get a new one and they'll need to change it when they log back in. Um, so that's really awesome that it has that feature. Then if we go up a bit more to commands.yml, this will allow you to have specific commands run um, on certain occasions. So we have first login, on join, on login, on log out and on register session etc and what you can do um, there's examples up here you can have a player or console execute the command and maybe broadcast something so if we were to grab this one um, on on join for example we could pop this down here obviously get rid of the pound sign to make sure it actually works and this will broadcast um, the player has joined welcome back when they join the server and the console will do that so that's how you would do that, very straightforward. And if we go all the way up to messages, in here is a list of all the messages players will receive in game. Um, so as you can see, it's quite a big plugin, so there's quite a few of these. Um, so various things to do with password recovery, emails, registration, etc. Um, so you can obviously have a look at that if you want. There's also a help file, um, so you can have a look in here. And as you can see, very, very long. And finally, we are going to have a look in the config.yml. 
So in here, this is a really long plugin um, file. So if we go down to the bottom, there's 550 lines, um, but we are going to go through it pretty quickly. The first section is uh, to do with a MySQL database. So you don't need to worry about that too much. Then settings, this is probably the most important bit. So um, you obviously have the messages language. Scroll down a bit more, you have restrictions. So can players who aren't authentic authenticated yet, can they chat? Uh, which commands are they allowed to do? The min and max nickname length, scroll down a bit more. Um, which worlds are allowed? The save quit location. And if we go down even more, timeout. So if we don't log in for a certain amount of time, 30 seconds, we'll be kicked. You can set this to zero to disable and then the allowed movement radius before logging in. You can have that to 100 if you want. Go down even more, max login per IP address. So this would stop people from going on multiple laptops or computers and just logging in with multiple accounts. Although if your brother wants to join your server, well, you're a bit stuck. Then if we scroll down even more, we have the security features to do with password length, so the min and max. And then if we scroll down even more, we have the unsafe passwords. So especially with um, like email addresses and other accounts, YouTube accounts, probably best not to use any of these as your password. Even in Minecraft, it's probably not good. So uh, choose something a bit dip more difficult to guess than these. And then if we scroll down a bit more, uh, we have some information about join messages, etc. And then all of the information to with the email addresses, which is really cool. Temporary ban if you use the wrong password too many times. So that is a pretty quick overview of the config.yml. Obviously, it's very, very big and would take me probably an hour to cover it in detail. Um, so if you want to look into it in more detail, by yourself you can go to the spigot page now if you look over here it says last update was 2017 on december uh, that's actually incorrect so if you go down to this link here it says you can use the latest dev build so go over to this and you'll be on this website now here you can download the most updated artifact and that was updated on the 8th of february so it's very um very recent uh, which is awesome and you can read more information about this you can go to support discord github dev bucket if you have problems scroll down even more and you can go to the command list and how to configure it as well so those are pretty much everything you're going to need it's an awesome plugin it's very useful and it helps protect your server and your players so that is everything if you need a server to host it on check out serverminer.com for the best and cheapest hosting around if you want to check me out, I've made lots of different plugin tutorials, link in the description. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you next time.